Greetings. My name is Devin. I've been mastering the art of 3D printing for nearly a decade. And let's just say where I come from, we're not afraid to play a little dirty. While 3D printing certainly gets easier with experience, there are still some little annoying challenges that try to get in the way. Lucky for you, I'm generous with my knowledge. And today, I'll be sharing no less than six sneaky tricks to help you take care of these issues with minimal effort. But be warned, you won't be finding these non-regulation tips in your printer's manual. For this is the way of the lazy printmaster. Let's begin. Sorry, I thought we needed at least one small montage. But now that that's over with, let's get started with tip number one, the wipe down. Not having your 3D print stick to the print bed can be one of the most frustrating things that can happen in 3D printing. And there are probably two common solutions that people will suggest. Some people say that you should clean the bed really well using a solution of warm soapy water or isopropyl alcohol. But then there's other people who will say that you should instead apply a good coating of glue stick or PVA based hairspray. These solutions can work, but sometimes they're just not strong enough. But what if I told you that you can get super adhesion by combining these tricks into one wipe down? Allow me to demonstrate. First of all, this build plate is already a little bit gross. So I'm going to start off by moving the print head out of the way, heating up the bed to around 50 degrees Celsius, and just wiping it down real good with this isopropyl alcohol. Once we've got a nice clean surface, it's time for the wipe down. Here are my ingredients. I've got this super strong hairspray as well as this isopropyl alcohol. Mine is 91%. The stronger, the better. I'll start by applying some hairspray in the center here. My nozzle's a little clogged, but it doesn't matter because we're just gonna add this equal amount of isopropyl alcohol to create our magical mixture. Now all we have to do is take a microfiber cloth and spread this liquid across the bed. As the heated bed dries it, it'll create a super nice thin film of hairspray solution as the alcohol dissolves away. We're left with an ultra sticky smooth bed. What's even better is from now on we can just clean the bed with isopropyl alcohol and it'll just re-spread out all of that PVA that's on the bed keeping that print bed adhesion at maximum levels. So now we've got a great smooth sticky surface for our prints, but that ain't worth shrimps if our bed ain't level. And that's why it's time for tip number two, the art of the live level. To start out, we're gonna preheat our print bed and the nozzle for PLA because those materials can expand and we want our bed to be level when everything's heated up. So once that's heated, we'll go ahead and home the printer and disable steppers. And that allows us to move everything around by hand. Now we can basically replicate the leveling procedure of a lot of these hobby and printers, except we don't have to wait for the printer to move. We move it ourselves. And while the standard trick of using printer paper to find the level is okay, a true lazy printmaster can just level by eye. 
Especially with a reflective surface like this, it's pretty easy to see that little gap underneath the nozzle. So all you gotta do is keep a close eye on that gap as you move from one corner to the next and level your bed like you always do. I also like to manually extrude the filament while moving the print head around the bed. Even if I'm not extruding consistently, I can still get a pretty good feel of how good the filament is sticking to the bed. And if I'm doing a big print that's taken up the whole build plate, there's nothing easier than just tracing a big square around the entire bed. And then there's the true live level, which is simply starting your print and making little adjustments with those knobs as the printer passes near them. If you slice your print with a few skirts, it buys you some time to make all the little adjustments you need, and by the time the model actually starts printing, your first layer will be near perfection. <sighs> Alright, we've got a nice clean level build plate that's going to take care of a lot of our problems, but we ain't out of the woods yet. So next I want to share an ancient technique that's super handy, but I don't see too many people using it nowadays. I call it the oil drip dust clip. If you let your filament sit around for too long, it might start to gather dust. And if you try to print with that dusty filament, some of that foreign particulate might make its way into the hot end and it could lead to printing inconsistencies or even a clog. So that's why we're gonna fashion a really quick little dust clip. While there are files you can print, this is the easiest way to do it. I have a small microfiber cloth and a binder clip, and that's really it. We can just wrap this cloth around the filament, clip it into place so that the filament can still pass through freely, but that cloth will pick up most of the dust on there. I clipped mine above the filament runout sensor here, but you can clip it anywhere above the actual entrance to the hot end and you should be fine. That little clip alone will take care of a lot of the dust and you'll be surprised at how dirty that cloth gets after just a few prints. So that's kind of just a good technique for generally maintaining your 3D printer for longevity. Now this next part may sound a little bit weird, but it actually solved one of my biggest, most frustrating under extrusion problems way back when I started 3D printing. So all you gotta do is take that microfiber cloth and add a little bit of oil. I'm talking canola oil, olive oil. I like to use cooking oils cause you know that they're okay with the heat, but really just about anything will do. Now I know I've got some oil around here somewhere. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, that's the oil drip dust clip. It's a weird one, but it can work wonders. This next one may sound like a bit of a nitpick, but if you're going for the perfect color change, it's gonna help you out. It's called the tweezer dab. In general, when you're removing filament, it's a good idea to push it down a bit before removing it. That way it comes out nice and clean. Then you can just go ahead and start feeding in the next color. And of course you'll extrude until the first color is completely gone. But the problem is, there might still be little boogers on the nozzle that get caught on the print later on. A wire brush does a great job of cleaning the nozzle, but my truly lazy solution is to just use the back end of my tweezers and smush it up against the nozzle. Then I can extrude a blob of filament and push it up against the nozzle. That way when I remove it, if there are any boogers, well, at least they'll be the right color. So there's a great technique for doing quick, clean filament changes. And a tweezer dab like that could even help out with some minor clogs. But what if you got a serious clog? I mean, serious. Well, you might be able to use those little 0.4 millimeter needles that come with some printers. You stick that up the nozzle, dig it around, and if you're lucky, the filament will start flowing again. If that doesn't work, you might try a cold pull where you heat up the printer to 250 degrees, feed in some ABS or nylon filament, let that cool down to about 140 degrees Celsius. Then you just yank out the filament and 
Hopefully the debris will be stuck to the end of the filament. If that still doesn't work, well then it's time for the most surefire way to purge your filament with a blowtorch. Now realize we're trying to be lazy, which means quick and efficient, sometimes a little sloppy, but we don't want to be careless. So we're going to go ahead and take this down to my dojo where it's a little safer to use an open flame. Well, of course, we've got to remove the nozzle first. Just make sure to heat it up to around 150 degrees Celsius first so you don't break it off. I should have better tools for this by now, but I don't. Anyways, we've got our nozzle. There it is with some filament stuck inside. Now we'll head down to my garage. I mean, my dojo. Here, I've got a wrench to hold onto my nozzle and I've also got some spare ABS filament, which I might use. I've got my blowtorch, some water nearby. Let's burn this baby. A lot of people like to get their nozzles glowing orange hot, but if you don't have a serious clog, that isn't always necessary. You can just heat it up enough so that you can basically do another cold pull, but just directly with the nozzle. As you can see, it works great, and oftentimes that's all you need. But if you really want to clean out your nozzle, don't be afraid to heat that sucker up real hot. Try to direct the flame down the tube to really clear out that nozzle. Just make sure you quench the nozzle in some water to harden it. And remember, the tool also gets hot. All right, our nozzle is purged. And if you want to make sure it's clear, you can just shine a light through from the other side. And if you see that nice little dot of light, You've got to clear your passage. <coughs> All right, we've got a nice clear nozzle now. I think we're ready to print just about anything. Well, just about. For some more exotic materials, we're going to need this last trick. I've shared it before, but it's never let me down. It's the hot bag. Some filaments like ABS and nylon don't just want a hot bed, they need a whole hot environment or they're gonna give you all kinds of trouble. And people like to think that they're lazy when they build an enclosure out of cardboard, but nothing's lazier than using the bag that the printer came in. It's beautiful. Seriously, this technique has done me so much good and I actually think it's better than a lot of enclosures because there's so little extra space in there. It's kind of just wrapped around the printer and that means it gets nice and warm in there. It doesn't even have to be perfect. There's some holes in this bag, but it does enough to keep the air from flowing and that helps us get really successful, beautiful prints. Now, some people might think this is also a fire hazard and a little bit careless, but, well, just be careful. All right, well, there you have it. Some of my dirtiest tricks to keep you printing. Follow these tips, and soon enough, you too will be ready for the Kumite. Now, as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't you dare forget to like and subscribe. And if you think you've got some sneaky tricks, I dare you to post them in the comments. Yeah, yeah. As always, don't forget to kick butt and stay inspired.